Today I'd like to share with you my latest side project. It's a video game I made from scratch in the way video games were made in the early or mid 70s. Uh, that is um, the electronic part, software and uh, content uh, all made from scratch. When you look at the name video games, uh, what it means is really you've got something that creates a video signal um, so that you can see the image on your screen and then you have the game part which is a combination of software and uh, graphics resource and audio resources. Um, I wanted to create something uh, very uh, basic because uh, this was my uh, very first foray into the electronics uh, design. So I started by uh, working on a prototype and I'm going to show you um, some results and then we'll talk about uh, how it works. So uh, here's the final product, a small console. Okay. Uh, Uh, it works with the MCU, which is a um, small CPU with uh, memory and uh, input outputs uh, in a single package, which is very convenient. It's an 8-bit uh, CPU. Uh, there's 2K of RAM, so it's very small, uh, 32K of ROM that you can flash. And then you've got this part, which is uh, a DAC, um, digital to analog converter, that converts the digital signal that's generated inside the CPU into a video signal. So I'm going to plug uh, the video signal to uh, the monitor over there. See? Um, and the power input here, uh, it's just... See, it's just a regular um, USB uh, power supply from my smartphone. I plug it in the power input here and then I just connect the video here and there you go. So how does it work? Well, if you look at this prototype that I made earlier, see it's all wired and soldered by hand. The MCU does all the work, that means uh, the MCU has to render all the pixels on the screen on the fly, because uh, you have only two uh, kilobytes of RAM, you can't have um, a frame buffer to hold the pixels on the screen and then scan them uh, later on. You have to generate the pixels on the fly. And if you look at the schematics over here, um, the MCU outputs 4 bits per pixel, so 16 shades of grey, and those are converted into um, analog composite video signal over here. Uh, there's also the sync signal for syncing uh, horizontally and vertically uh, during the rendering. Uh, the MCU also reads the buttons. Uh, we have three buttons here um, and control the ship and shoot um, during the game. Uh, finally there, there's a uh, interface over here which is the USB-USP uh, 
port that you can see here that enables to program uh, the MCU to flash the ROM of the MCU um, to program it. So first uh, I have to generate the video signal. Uh, one line of video signal in PAL is 64 microseconds. So I set up a timer and uh, generate a, um, a uh, interrupt uh, when the timer reaches uh, the 64 microseconds. And uh, at that point I generate a pulse uh, for the vertical sync, as you can see in the graph here. The pulse is uh, a zero signal. Um, the black level is actually here at this level is actually at 0.3 volts. So the sync is zero volt, black level is 0.3 volts, and the white level is one volt. So after the pulse, I can start streaming the pixels, uh, and I have those four bits here to generate the 16 uh, um, shades of gray uh, to produce my image. Um, then I count the lines, and uh, when I reach the bottom of the screen, I have to generate the vertical sync, which is a series of pulses, as you can see in, the, in this graph, that tells the TV now uh, a new frame is coming. So that's basically it for the, the video signal generation. Now the content of the pixels. Um, the system, as I told you, is made of tiles because there is no way uh, I could fit a uh, frame buffer into the, the 2K of RAM uh, available. So I built uh, a tile set in Photoshop. Uh, by the way, I discovered that you could actually change the, the aspect ratio of pixels in Photoshop uh, and I used uh, the anamorphic 2 to 1 uh, ratio which uh, matches quite well my pixel ratio uh, um, in my renderer. So I could draw um, with the, the, the right aspect ratio my tile set uh, in Photoshop. So you can see this is the, the full tile set. Uh, the introduction image is also uh, stored in my tile set. And then I have to build uh, a level uh, with each tile referencing one of the tiles from the tile set. And to do that, I simply used uh, Tilet, which is a free uh, open source tile editor. Uh, so basically you load your tile set here and then you can uh, choose uh, anything from your tile set and build the map uh, by clicking and putting the, the elements uh, in the map. And you can see the map is quite long. This is the first level. I have three levels like that. My levels are stored uh, in the flash ROM, but they are copied uh, onto the RAM before the game starts because um, when you play, uh, you actually run two times um, in one level. Uh, so you get more opportunities to uh, clear uh, the levels by running two times over it. Uh, and in order to persist uh, my data, I had to have them in, uh, in RAM. So, if you look at uh, the levels of uh, some uh, files over here, so here are the two, uh, the three levels. What's exported from Tiled, and I also have this buffer, um, which holds a copy of the, the, the map into the RAM for uh, persisting the, um, the elements. The, the type buffer on screen is a simple uh, small buffer uh, with references to the, uh, the tiles. Uh, but also I had to build a tool to convert uh, the image of the tile set into uh, data that I could use in my in my program. Uh, so I wrote a small uh, tile converter and that creates uh, 
my tile sets uh, in in memory. So it's also in program memory, so it's in the flash ROM. And you can see oh, how each tile is um, stored in memory once converted from the, the bitmap to uh, to the data uh, that I can use in, in the program. That was my uh, prototype board and then I decided to make a PCB to make it um, much uh, cleaner and to produce the final um, uh, version of the console hopefully. So here is the, uh, the PCB design, it's a double sided design, very simple and I sent uh, the design to manufacturing and then I received the boards that looks like this very clean and ju I just had to uh, solder the uh, components on the board to produce the final version that you can see here the final version doesn't have the USB ASP port that's because I made a special version with the uh, connector here so I can program and this is basically my dev kit uh, with the standard uh, USB ASP uh, programmer that connects to a USB port on the PC side and upload the code and the data inside the flash uh, ROM uh, of the chip over here when it's done I can remove the chip and put it on the final board and I have a um, totally independent uh, console over here. You can see also a small, um, a small case that I uh, print um, over here. I printed it um, at our hacker space uh, called Incube Hacker uh, here in Namur. And that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I did. I did enjoy doing this project. It's very fun. A lot of fun doing this uh, wall uh, from scratch uh, game. Uh, if you have any comments or any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to write them down uh, in the in the comment sections. And uh, at some times, I, I hope I will have the time to upload some of the files and uh, write down uh, the making of uh, on my uh, on my website that's about it thanks for your time see you soon <laughs>